job of people works for freedom, cause and effect. Complete the chart below by filling in a cause or an effect. So on the left side, we have the causes with an arrow pointing to the effect. So the first one is the effect of Anne Hutchinson is sent away. So I'm going to pull out my book, the section about Anne Hutchinson that we read. It says, Anne Hutchinson stood up for her beliefs. In England, she was not allowed to practice her religion. She moved to Boston, Massachusetts in 1634. She came over with other people of the same religion. But Hutchinson's beliefs changed. She believed that faith was more important than following the rules of the church. She took a risk and told people about her beliefs. A risk is a chance that something bad might happen. Other people in her group wanted her to stop talking about her new beliefs. Finally, she was sent away in 19, or I'm sorry, in 1637. So I'm going to stop right there. That tells us why she, she was sent away, right? And let's look at right before that where it tells us why she was sent away. It says other people in her group wanted her to stop talking about her new beliefs. So that's why they sent her away, okay? So people wanted her to stop talking about her beliefs would be the cause, okay? People wanted her to stop talking about her beliefs. Okay. And the next one says the cause is Frederick Douglass speaks out against slavery. Okay, so I'm going to go in, back into the book and um, go to the section that was talking about Frederick Douglass. So what happens after he speaks up about slavery? So here we go. This section is about Frederick Douglass. It says Frederick, Doug Frederick Douglass escaped from slavery like Harry Tubman. He also used his talents to help other enslaved people. People. Douglas was a writer and a speaker. He traveled to many cities and gave hundreds of speeches against slavery. Douglas also wrote articles and three autobiographies or books about his own life. He started his own anti-slavery newspaper in 1847. It was called the North Star. Douglas's speeches and writings reached many people. His words led other people to join the fight to stop slavery. Okay, so... When he speaks out, what effect did that have? Well, it says his words led other people to join the fight to stop slavery. So that's what his, him speaking out. So, um, other, sorry, people. to stop slavery. Okay. Next one says, President Lincoln issues the Emancipation Proclamation. So I'm going to go to the section where it talks about Lincoln. So what does that, what's the effect of that? Okay, so it says, President Abraham Lincoln led our country during a difficult time in the U.S. history, in U.S. history. This time was the Civil War, when the northern states were at war against the southern states. The Civil War started in 1861 after southern states broke away to form their own country. They wanted to keep slavery and have more rights given to the states. The northern states went to war with the southern states to stop this from happening. Here we got everything, Emancipation Proclamation. President Lincoln wanted to end slavery. He issued a document called the Emancipation Proclamation during the war in 1863. This document freed the enslaved people in many of the southern states. Okay, so what was the effect of the Emancipation Proclamation? Well, it freed people, <coughs> free enslaved people of the southern states. Okay, so it freed enslaved people in the south. Okay? Recall number two. Why was it a risk? For Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin to help write the Declaration of Independence. So I'm going to go right over here back to this page where they're talking about a 
about Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson. It said, hmm, why would it be a risk? Okay. It says, this document gave reasons why the United States should be free from Great Britain. Jefferson and Franklin took a risk to secure the rights for the American people. So remember, a risk is doing something that could be, you know, could be dangerous. It could be, it's risky, okay? So they might not like that. It says, Great Britain ruled them, and they wanted to have their own country. They wanted to become a free country, right? So it was a risk for them to write the Declaration of Independence because you know the great britain probably doesn't want them to become free you know so why was it a risk for thomas jefferson and benjamin franklin to help write the declaration of independence well um oh you know what i'm sorry down here i just noticed it says both men could have lost their lives for what they did so that was the big risk so they could have lost their lives for what they did Okay, so um, they could have lost their lives Compare what Harriet Tubman did about slavery with what Frederick Douglass did. Okay, so if you guys remember, um, they're back actually on the same two pages here. So we look at Harriet Tubman. She helped people find freedom. She was a slave and she decided to risk her freedom to help a lot of people escape slavery. She started the Underground Ra Railroad. So she was physically, right, helping people. It was a secret group of people who helped people who were slaves to escape from freedom. She led 300 people to freedom and none of them were ever caught. It was like a secret mission, right? And then Frederick Douglass was one person who did escape from, from um, slavery, just like Harry Tubman. But he used it a little bit differently. He was a writer and a speaker, and he traveled and he gave speeches and wrote articles and books and got a lot of people to join in the fight, okay? So Harriet Tubman was an individual, right, who physically helped people escape slavery, whereas Frederick Douglass was a writer and speaker who encouraged people to end slavery. Okay, so Harriet Tubman... led, let's say led, people out of slavery in the Underground Railroad, which you know isn't really a railroad. It's just a secret group of, it's a secret path that they would take. Oops, I said under group, sorry. I got, I can't talk, I cried, sorry. Underground Railroad. And then I'll say um, Douglas, because sometimes you can just refer to somebody by their last name when you're writing. Douglas wrote books oops, and speeches to and slavery. Okay, and then the last one says synthesize. How did Martin Luther King Jr. help African Americans gain equal rights? Well, we seem to know a lot about him because you know, we're doing reports on him. He's just kind of famous, right? And the others are famous too, but for you guys, probably you know more about him than some of the others. But when I look at the article, it says standing up for rights. Martin Luther King Jr. worked for civil rights of all people in the 1950s and 1960s. Um, civil rights are rights people have because they're citizens. Um, it says he led protests, gave speeches. Um, yeah. A lot of protests and speeches. Okay. So um, we'll just say MLK Jr. That's our little abbreviation. Gave speeches.
speeches. Like, if I have a dream speech, we all know about. And led protests. during the civil rights movement and that's what that was called all those people like Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King Jr they were all part of the civil rights movement which means that all people should be treated equally despite their skin color no more segregation segregation is when they would separate people right all right, so the last part says, write a description. What makes a person a hero? Write a paragraph describing the qualities of a hero, okay? So this is going to be an independent thing. Um, think about what makes a person a hero. So all these people had something in common. They took risks, didn't they? They took risks, which means they did things that were kind of dangerous for them. Um, and they did it for to help others. You know, not just themselves. Okay. All right. Okay. Golden Gate Bridge. There is a landmark in our community. It is the Golden Gate Bridge. It is painted a bright orange color. Why is it called the Golden Gate Bridge? If it's orange, people from all over the world knows about the bridge. It opened in 1937. Um... People use the bridge every day. It's confusing because there's the punctuation. A man named Joseph Strauss designed it, and our family drives across the bridge sometimes. I really think you should visit the landmark, too. It says, the example above needs revising. As you read it, check to see if the writer begins by telling what is being described, presents ideas clearly and logically. Remember, spelling, grammar, and punctuation are important. All right. You know, being a teacher myself, I really want to fix it when as soon as I read it. It says, there's a landmark in our community, okay? It is the Golden Gate Bridge, okay? This needs to be capitalized because that's part of the name of this special place. It is painted a bright orange color, okay? Let's make this capital. Why is it called the Golden Gate Bridge? So, remember, Golden Gate bridge and look they forgot the d here bridge if it is orange that's a question because see they said why that has to be a question and since we have a punctuation this needs to be capitalized people from all over the world knows okay remember we said people from all over the world that's actually a plural subject because we're talking about many people not just one singular so it would be no remember we talked about that so a predicate would be know about the bridge it opened in 1937 period capital people use the bridge every day period a man named joseph strauss designed it and our family drives across the bridge sometimes um yeah it just seems like maybe that's a run-on so just say designed it cross that out and say our family drives across the bridge sometimes i think you should visit the landmark too Oh, I really think you should visit the landmark, too. Okay. All right. So, there you go. Looks like that's about all you really have to do. Okay. So, do they tell what's being described? Yeah, they're talking about the landmark. Is it clearly and logically? Yeah. Does it use proper punctuation? Well, now we do. Use past, present, and future verb tenses. Well, now, I would say. All right. Very good.